In today's video, we're going to go ahead and start taking a look at Ohm's Law. And we're going to use a triangle to kind of demonstrate everything that goes along with them. But before we actually get down to the actual math, I want to go ahead and give kind of an explanation how the circuit kind of flows. I like to think of you know, the voltage, you know, that current. It's, 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 a, it's a river flowing down, maybe a nice gentle hill. And it's got a certain force that's pushing it along. And let's say along comes a beaver and it builds a dam. That dam is essentially the resistors that we're using. And it causes a certain amount of impedance for that water to flow through or the current. So I can just picture some little farmer standing on the side being like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Get it, Ohms? <laughs> I'll try not to do too many of those. Now once that beaver has that dam built, the amount of water that comes out at the other side it's reduced. And that's how much amperage we have left to work with for our LEDs and anything else that we put in line after that. So let's go ahead, we'll quickly draw this up and we'll take a look, see how the, the math works. Now it is very simple math. Simple little multiplication division. Anyone can do this. Let's get back to the office. So Ohm's triangle states that the voltage, amperage or I, and resistance. Form a triangle. Like this. Now voltage, I'm going to use multimeter units as that's probably what we're going to see mostly. Voltage is always V. Amperage or sometimes current. You'll see marked as a large A. And resistance is almost always ohms, that little omega sign. And the triangle is very simple. Basically, if you're trying to solve for any one of these values, which you're gonna need for your circuit, you can simply just hide that value and you get the formula you need. So if we're trying to find the resistance, we know that we can take the voltage and divide it by the amperage or the amps. Likewise, if we're trying to find the voltage, how much voltage we need to power circuit, we know that we can multiply the amperage by, by the resistance and get that. So it's really just three simple formulas. V is equal to I times R. I is equal to V divided by R. And R is equal to V divided by I. That's all we really need to work with as far as the basics go. So let's go ahead and take a look at the circuit that we used yesterday. So here's our pi. We went out, then we had a resistor. Then it came across, we came down. We had an LED. which then swung around for the ground, back to the pi. So we know the pi was 3.3 volts. And while you didn't actually see the labeling on my LEDs, because I've already thrown them out and they're in my little case, it was actually a two volt one that required 20 milliamps to run. I do have some three volt ones, but the resistors that I had on hand at the time, I didn't really have a whole lot smaller than 200. And we'll see why I end up went with, went with the two volt one instead of a three. So with this circuit drawn, we want to find this out, which is the R. So we know that the voltage divided by the amperage will give us our resistance value or the ohms needed. So first off, we're going to take the volts and we got to subtract them from each other. So 3.3 volts coming from the pi minus two volts that the LED is going to use gives us 1.3 volts total. Great, so 1.3 divided by the amperage, which at 20 milliamps, that comes out to be two thousandths of an amp. That's 0 0.02 amps. Is equal to, let me get my calculator, 65 ohms of resistance. So any resistor 65 ohms or greater would have been fine. If we could have got one exactly at 65, that would have made the LED at its brightest. Now it's important to note that you don't want to go lower than 65 because if you push too much current through, you're going to fry your LED and potentially damage the pins on your GPIO. And we don't want that. Sure, these things are extremely cheap, but we don't want to keep just buying new ones because we keep blowing the old ones up. Although that probably would make an interesting YouTube video. <laughs> anyway, one other thing to note is that the Resistor that I was using yesterday was a 220 ohms. And sometimes you'll notice in behind, they'll have something like a 5% behind it or a 2% or a 10%. And that's the variance this has. So this is a plus or minus 5%. And mine was actually 220, not 222. 
So that means that I was actually getting plus or minus 11 ohms to this. So it's 331 to, well, I guess it'd be the other way around, 209. So that's the actual range that this resistor was. Now we could have went ahead and tested it, but as we see, anything above 65 was fine. If you go too high, if you went out and grabbed something that say, let's 5.1 million, you're not gonna have enough power to go through here to power it at all. Now, hopefully this will help you out when you're at home playing around with your own projects, figuring exactly how much current resistance and voltage you're gonna to need to power your own circuits. Now, hopefully this is gonna help you understand exactly how much voltage, amperage, and resistance we're gonna need for some of the circuits that we're gonna be building. I'm not gonna sit down and actually do the math for each one. I may go ahead and put diagrams up in the middle of it, and you can just go ahead and pause it and take a look at them. But I will go ahead and just have them pre-built ahead of time. But anyway, let me know down below if you have any other questions. And if you want a little bit of extra homework, Try to figure out exactly how much we're pushing through if we went ahead and used the five volts off of the Raspberry Pi. But anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears.